And from Freedom Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, our New Year's Marathon rolls on. And this evening, it's 18th ranked Louisville hosting 11 and 2 UNLV. The Cardinals look to extend a long home winning streak. The running Rebels try to break it perhaps without their best player. Jay Billis, let's get to Star Watch. Well, Rene Rougeau for UNLV, one of the hardest working hustle players in America. Nobody plays harder than Rene Rougeau. And for Louisville, Samardo Samuels has been a load inside. A powerful interior player. UNLV is going to have to root him out of the post. Where he catches it is vital. To the starting lineups now for UNLV. Trayvon Willis is going to start. Instead of Wink Adams, Darger can be the three-point dagger. Santia Jr. Ford and Oscar Belfield, the freshman point guard. For Louisville, Terrence Williams, the lone senior starter for Rick Pitino. Earl Clark, like Samuel, stands 6'9". Knowles and Smith both fine long-range shooters. And, of course, the three-point shot, such a big weapon for Rick Pitino. Well, Rick Pitino loves to shoot the three, and Terrence Williams likes to pull the trigger on it as well. But I think Williams is better when he gets to the rim. The big story for UNLV, the running Rebels, Wink Adams, because of an abdominal strain, hasn't even practiced for several days and unable to go as a game time decision. Jay, how much does it hurt them? It hurts them a lot. Wink Adams is their leading scorer. He had 25 points in their win over Arizona, and it takes away an emotional leader as well. But Dave, sometimes teams play better when they're missing a good player the first game out. We'll see with UNLV. Darger will swing it. Here's the point guard, Belfield, just a freshman, running the point for Lon Kruger. Santee off target, bit too strong with a mid-range jump shot. UNLV 11 and 2, the favorite to win the Mountain West Conference. Louisville off to an 8 and 2 start. An elite 8 team a year ago, Williams flips it up. Oh, caught a lot of iron, but it will not fall for Terrence Williams. Terrence Williams is a super skilled player. He leads Louisville in assists, and he is such a magnificent athlete. I think he needs to get into the lane, get fouled more, and really use his athleticism. Rujo trying to go all the way through, bounces for Willis instead of setting up a jump shot and knock it down. The three-pointer on target. I think Trayvon Willis is the guy for UNLV that needs to have a big game. Willis is a transfer from Memphis, and he's the type of young man that relishes the spotlight, and he could really take the challenge today against Louisville and have a big game. They really, didn't really need him without Wink Adams. Of course, it's going to be a traveling violation on Preston Knowles, the 6'1 sophomore. Wink Adams in some pain the other night as he went down with that abdominal strain. And they do have conference play starting on Saturday, Jay, in the Mountain West Conference. Again, they're favored to win it. I don't think they want a tenth fade here in Louisville. Well, they certainly don't want to risk it if it's unnecessary. But if he was ready to play, he played. Leaping in is Rujo, and he's going to be fouled on the play. The personal on Samuels. The crowd here wanted a charge, of course. UNLV out in front on the three-pointer. Louisville looking to trap. They put on some full-court pressure. And UNLV trying to get the ball into the middle of the floor so they can make a play. You know, they were saying that Rougeau was not yet into his shooting motion, and they're going to let him take it out of bounds. And Alon Kruger had a different point of view. He wanted to be shooting two there. The former Florida, Illinois, and Atlanta Hawks head coach. There's Belfield jumping back and knocking that one down. A three-pointer and absolutely nothing but net for the rookie out of Los Angeles. And a timeout here, Rick Pitino right in the face of Earl Clark, the big junior, and a couple of other guys in that hole. He's very unhappy. Well, he's unhappy because his team didn't execute defensively. Just a simple little screen for the screener play, and Belfield able to pop out and get wide open and set his feet without a challenge. And Rick Pitino wants every jump shot taken by UNLV to be a challenge shot, and he is upset at that last execution defensively by his team. He is also barking at the officials, Ruben Ramos, Dan Christman, and Larry Spaulding. So Rick Pitino's just not happy heading into the new year. His team also losing a couple of games that many here around Freedom Hall thought when the schedule came out, they could count as victories, Western Kentucky and Minnesota. Well, this is a different team than last year's team. I still think this Louisville team, by the end of the year, is going to be a contender for a Final Four spot. Last year, at this time, Louisville was struggling in a similar fashion, but it was because of injuries more than anything. They are ranked number 18 in the country as Earl Clark went to take it to the baseline, and he draws the foul. 
inside the first couple of minutes of play and a look at Lon Kruger in his fifth season at UNLV. He's taken this program to two consecutive NCAA tournaments and he's won 80 percent of his game since the start of 2006 as Louisville throws it away and a choppy start for Patino's team. Well, you're not going to see many games that feature two better coaches. Rick Patino, the only man to take three different schools to an NCAA Final Four and Lon Kruger just one of a handful to have taken four different schools to the NCAA tournament and win once he gets there. Both have coached in the NBA and both are very bright tacticians. Well, UNLV with a nice win over Arizona. They are perfect on the road so far. Wink Adams out at 14 points a game. The top scorer and missing, as Jay said, the true leader. Rujo with a kick out. Belfield inside. Nice dish. Went right back to Rujo, but he could not knock it down. UNLV facing a 2-3 zone, able to get that ball into the middle to Rougeau, who made a great play. That little shot fake set everything up. Williams on target, Clark over the back, and that one's going to roll out. They'll keep it on this end with 17-23 to go. And this is the kind of start that UNLV wanted to get off to. Ball in the middle, that little shot fake got Samardo Samuels just to lift up, and all of a sudden everything is help and recover to get a lane. Rougeau on the other end, cannot, however, on a run out, Rougeau by himself. He'll stuff it down, and it's all running Rebels here early on. Well, UNLV is a resilient basketball team. They guard very effectively. They're a man-to-man -man team. They like to deny, but they pressure. They want to take you out of what you want to run and make you do what you don't practice. Louisville has missed all three of their shots. Williams jumping in. He'll draw the contact. It was 16.58 to go. A look at that run out and a dunk by Rougeau is going to be a real key tonight. Well, nobody got back. I think everybody on this Louisville team expected that Earl Clark was going to make that shot. Edgar Sosa did not rotate back. And it was just an easy run out basket for Rougeau. You know, it'll be with four assists and four field goals. So moving the ball well. Dara Santee is really trying to fight Samardo Samuels in there. Samuels hit hard. And that up against Darius Santee, the 6'8 junior, who fouls him here with 16.45 left in the half. Now, four days ago, Louisville ripped UAB for a 20-point win. They hit 11 three-pointers in a very crisp effort for the number 18-ranked Cardinals in that contest. In the games that Louisville has lost, they've shot 32% combined against both Minnesota and Western Kentucky. And I think part of that has to do, one, with getting the ball inside, but the other part has to do with how crisp they pass the ball, whether they're quick passes. And oftentimes, how you pass it is a big, is a determining factor in how you shoot it. Samuels misfiring on the first foul shot. They're only the crack in the scoring column. And a big crowd here waiting to ring in the new year and trying to do it with a victory. Not two players that finally they have scored a point and some derisive applause at Freedom Hall. Now Louisville likes to press. They're going to throw a little trap in the background, get the ball out of the hands of Belfield, make somebody else handle it. But you can't be a good pressing team unless you're an efficient offensive team and you make the other team take the ball out of the net. Well, let's quick move to his right. That one slapped away and now reach in foul. That's going to be an offensive foul, trying to win that ball back by Willis. And Jerry Smith, a very good defender, had the inside track for that ball, and Willis just used that left arm to hold him off. That's his second. And so Kendall Wallace, 6'4", his sophomore out of Mesa, Arizona, will come on for the running Rebels. Now, Louisville won this meeting last year in Las Vegas. They won it by 20 points, and they've won the last four. Head to head against the running Rebels. Williams up top for Samuels. Looking for Earl Clark in the post, but Darger's doing a pretty good job of Easy in there. limiting him. Williams with the one-hander, didn't touch anything. Boy, an ugly start for the Cardinals. Well, that's the kind of shot I'm talking about with Terrence Williams. I mean, that's a, he settled for that. He could have gotten deeper or he could have just passed the ball. But that's not a good shot for him. Great pass. Belfield dishing down low, Masamba had it knocked away from him. Bryce Masamba, big freshman at 6'10. Williams with the quick dribble, stripped and fouled with 15.42 left in the opening half. And the running Rebels doing exactly that behind Rene Ruggio, 6'6 senior out of Rancho Cucamonga, California.
Well, certainly UNLV has come out slugging against Louisville here, a 10 to 1 lead. Rick Patino from the very opening seconds, really unhappy. Our New Year's Eve marathon rolling on here. And earlier today, how about Wisconsin at Ann Arbor, Jay? Really laying it on Michigan. And Wolverines were hardly in that game. I was so impressed, as I always am, with Joe Krabenhoff. His defense on Manny Harris, I thought, was absolutely spectacular. Did a great job of staying solid, making Harris shoot over him. And Manny Harris really struggled. And Michigan couldn't get any shots to drop. With the exception of Novak, who did a really nice job. Terrence Williams continues to have foul shot issues, and it's one thing holding him back. Rick Pitino has said, as far as being a more complete player, he makes one of two. There's the trap in the backcourt, trying to speed up Belfield, and he can't pick the ball up there. And a jump ball situation here because he really got tied up. And Alon Kruger. In the situation the possession arrow is on his side got away with one there once you get across half court you've got to hold your dribble or give that ball up you cannot pick it up in a trap that far back Rizzo kicks out off top Belfield shot clock down to seven he'll fire the three and that one well off target really good defensive set there by Louisville. They will play some man. They're mostly a zone team, but they love to get out and press. And want to, they want to keep UNLV from advancing that ball down the middle of the floor. Williams slicing in. Can't get the left hander to fall. Great drive, just not a strong enough finish. Rujo waiting for the point guard. Belfield gives it off, and Masamo off his hands and out of bounds. Nice Masamo, 6'10 freshman out of Sweden. Now one glancing off his fingertips, a 10-2 lead for UNLV. UNLV will play nothing but man-to-man -man defense in this game. That is their staple. And they're a very solid defensive team. Samuels the Gifton and much Ballyhoo freshman on top of Smith. And Samuels open to get the ball. He should have gotten a lot earlier. Threw three red shirts around him. Williams with a quick move and now the kick into the corner. Shot clock down to nine. Smith weaves in. That one blocked from behind. Great job by Rougeau. Shot clock down to three. The floater. And that one is off target. Edgar Sosa can't get it to go. Rene Rougeau did a spectacular job defensively. First on Jerry Smith, but he is so solid as a defender. Darger, yes. All net for the 6'7 senior. You cannot leave Joe Darger. And he is a three-point shooter and a three-point shooter only. If you leave him and he gets his feet set, he's going to drill it. And now this UNLV uh, LV team has a lot of confidence, and they're playing a little bit with house money. And they've hit three out of four outside that arc already. Here's Sosa outside the three using the screen set by Earl Clark. They need to get the ball inside. Smith outside. Nothing. Didn't even touch the iron. Either something going to the basket or inside. There are already five team fouls on UNLV. And Louisville's got to give them the opportunity to foul some more so they can get to the free throw line. UNLV does not turn it over very often. Only 12 times a game as Wallace will get fouled here with 13-16 to play. Kendall Wallace, his great uncle Riley Wallace, was the basketball coach at Hawaii for 20 years. Watch Rene Rougeau here. Does a really good job of moving his feet, but just times it to block that shot at the end. Now, that was the end of the play, but the entire 30 seconds before Sosa was able to get that ball after the block, he stayed solid. Didn't go for fakes. Stayed between his man and the basket. Now, I think he's going to make a great case to be the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. He's that good defensively. Rougeau has already earned his degree in criminal justice. He walked in graduation ceremonies on December 16th. He'll take a breather here. And he's the first in his family to have gone to college. And just a great kid. Came as a walk-on. I've never heard of him in high school. He went to the same high school as Darren Pius in the UCLA and Jeff Pendergraft of Arizona State. And didn't have a distinguished high school career. He's probably the 15th man on his team when he was a junior. Worked his way. He never started in high school. And walked on at UNLV. And he's one of the most respected players, not only on the West Coast, but I think in the country. He was second in his conference last year in steals. As you mentioned, a superb defender. 
15 on the shot clock for Louisville. Boy, do they look disjointed there. 0 for 9. Shooting the basketball from the field. Clark has it slapped away. That's a clean knock with 12.48 to go and 8 on the shot clock. And Patino has been beside himself in the first half. Well, they need leadership right now. And that's got to come, I think, from the guard position. Knowles not there for him. Rebounded away by Williams. And a new shot clock for the Cardinals. Louisville is getting really good pressure from this UNLV defense. And getting the ball inside is where Louisville is going to get back into this game. Not only drawing fouls, but getting easy scoring opportunities for Samardo Samuels. He's a load inside. 6-9, the man from Jamaica, big freshman, Louisville's leading scorer at 15 points per game. You see, he's almost up to seven rebounds as well. Nobody's surprised. He came in as one of Louisville's most decorated rookies ever. McDonald's All-American out of St. Benedict Prep in New Jersey. Great All-American. He played on a very powerful front line at St. Benedict's. He played with Greg Echenique, who's now at Rutgers. And you know, Samuels is, and he can play above the rim, but hasn't been doing it. And Rick Patino has been working with him and, and cajoling him and getting on him to start playing above the rim. Patino thinks that Samuels can be a player in the mold of an Elton brand. Not as good, but he doesn't run quite as well right now. That's something he needs to work on. He just got Masama to pick up his second foul. And now UNLV to set it up. You know, I think Louisville's pressure can really get to UNLV throughout the game. Wallace swooping in, too strong with a layup. Louisville to push the tempo. Williams up ahead to Knowles. He wants to attack, got airborne in the paint. They swing it for Sosa. He bounces. Here's Williams in close, in and out. That was inside the cylinder. A 10 point lead for UNLV. UNLV just makes you take tough shots. Santee puts it to the deck. He gets tied up there. And they'll win the possession arrow as well. Rick Pitino wants to see more of that kind of effort. He wants to see the basket get absorbed by shots from his Cardinals, but nothing's fallen yet. A happy New Year from Freedom Hall here in Louisville, Kentucky. And you have a 10 point lead. Now she's delighted, but. Rick Pitino certainly is not by the inept performance of his Cardinals, at least in the opening stages, Jay. Well, first, I thought it was bad form for that young lady to steal your hat. <laughs> but Rick Pitino is upset with his team primarily because they have taken so many challenge shots. I mean, he wants Samardo Samuels to do a better job rebounding. Samuels has not rebounded particularly well in this game, but if they pass better and run better offense they're going to get some open shots instead of having to take so many tough ones they've taken too many tough shots trying to get it inside of samuels brown wanted him to turn and fire he mishandled it a bit and when he mishandled it he still could have made the play so sit down the lane and that's going to be going tending so count that basket and that is their first field goal for Louisville so far tonight. So also getting all the way to the 10. You can see the athleticism of Deshaun Mitchell, the left-hander, just a freshman from Newark, New Jersey. So you mentioned without Wink Adams, the leader and the top scorer for the Roman Rebels out with that abdominal strain. They needed other guys to pick up the pace, and they have done that. UNLV, at least early on here. Well, they're in a little bit of foul difficulty. They can't afford to put Louisville on the foul line and let them see the ball go through the net. Backfield denied. Noel shut him down. Shot clock at one and stolen away. Williams with the tap. Now can he hang on to it? He flips it back to Noel's a great catch. Here's Clark to shoot it. That was all set up for a long three to really light up this crowd. It would not go down. And Louisville showing much better fight on the defensive end. They were in a 2-3 zone on the last possession now in man-to-man -man after the miss. Delta trying to bounce into the paint. That one stolen away. Here's Clark on the dribble. And he loses it quickly right back over to Santee. Now the run out slammed down by Deshaun Mitchell. Just a careless turnover by Earl Clark, who is a playmaking almost point forward, but just took it a little bit too far and needed to pull up and get something set up. There was nowhere for him to go. Whistle and a foul off the basketball here. 
with 10.06 remaining. In the first half, Capital One Bowl Week continues New Year's Day at 11 a.m. Eastern with the Outback Bowl. That's part of the Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Steve Spurrier's defensive-minded South Carolina Gamecocks taking on Doak Walker candidate Sean Green and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Andre McGee into the ball game now for Louisville, an outstanding defender that can really put great pressure on the ball. Sosa just picked up his second foul for Louisville moments ago. Under 10 minutes to go before halftime. Back into the 2 3 zone. And try to get the ball into the gaps of this zone, get it in the middle, pass it back out. Santee at the foul line off the fake, dumps it down low, and a great reverse. A what, tremendous play by Rujo. What presence, just understood where he was when he got that pass from Santee. That was a very difficult play to make, but made with ease by Rene Rujo. Another freshman of the game, Jared Swapshire for the Cardinals. Started a couple of freshmen from time to time. Here's the most talented Samuels. Got a great look inside and it would not fall. That's what Patino's been talking about with him, playing above the rim. You know, he settled for a below the rim type play there. He needed to go up there stronger. Not only complete the play, but get fouled as well. He had his man buried in the paint. Exactly what Patino screamed at him when he came down the other end of the floor. Go up strong. UNLV winning the war in the paint. They've outscored them 8-2. That jump shot right on the money by Rujo. He's doing a little bit of everything here. He is. He's a, he's a terrific player. But Samuel's a poor job defensively, not helping out as Rujo was turning the corner. That was just way too easy to go up unchallenged. 20-6 UNLV. Rarely will you see Rick Pitino more animated than he has been in his first half as he is pounding it into his Cardinals head how badly they're playing. Well you get the ball into the middle that's a playmaking position but Samardo Samuels did not have his hands up and Santee was able to see right over him and deliver that ball down to the baseline but just a wonderful play by Rene Rougeau who how, how great is it for Lon Kruger to have a guy like Rougeau walk into his office as a walk on say hey I'd really like to play for it. They were worried Lon Kruger was worried about Rougeau that he was either going to get hurt or hurt one of his scholarship players when he first put him on the floor. He was just a whirling dervish for him, and he's turned into an all-conference caliber player. A senior now as a junior got into the starting lineup, and Ben Kruger had to give him that scholarship. And now he just might be his best player on the floor with Wink Adams out. So far, they are not missing the all-conference performer. Have a mismatch right now. Rutledge guarding Samuels. Williams misses the runner. Samuels up strong. He gets fouled from behind by Mitchell. Rujo, by the way, has not missed a shot. He's four for four. Has eight points, four rebounds, and three assists. And Adams can only sit and watch. Guy who jumped on Arizona for 25 points. Out with that abdominal strain. Just a really good player. Guy that can score, and he's got great heart. You know, we talked before, Dave, about when you have a player like Wink Adams that gets injured, he's going to be out for a, a, a short while. I think he'll be back soon. But when he can't play in a game like this, oftentimes a team will, will really step forward, and different guys will, will step into that role and perform at a higher level than you would expect. Now, it's tough for them to sustain that over time. But sometimes right out of the gate, they can perform better than you would expect. Pressure again from Louisville. He's handled it very, very well. He's a rookie point guard, but he looks pretty smooth out of Westchester High School in Los Angeles. Great pressure on the ball by McGee. McGee trying to slap it away from behind. Here's the feed to Mitchell, draws the double team underneath. Knocked away, and here come the Cardinals on the attack. Andre McGee looking up the floor. The catch, and it can't convert on the other end. That was Preston Knowles. Would have been a spectacular basket. Everything just a bit off for Louisville. An opportunity in transition, and instead of bringing the ball down with a bit of an awkward catch, Preston Knowles tried to finish the play. Belfield gets the iron, but also gets it to drop through the net, and it's 22 to 7. I'm really impressed with Oscar Belfield. He's going to be a really, really good player. He's been a little turnover prone throughout the first part of this season, and. I think you can speed him up a little bit, but so far, Louisville hadn't been able to do it. No, it's very smooth from long range. He's hitting 42% of those threes. And the Cardinals 
Bruins desperately needed that. Finally, they get a triple on the board. Still, Louisville just two for 17 shooting in the first half. Crowd coming to life here on New Year's Eve. Seven minutes to play before half. 2 3 zone. There's a lob set that they like to run. Shot clock at four. Nearly thrown away with three seconds on the shot clock. And the running Rebels looking a little bit confused by the zone that Patino has set up. 6.47 left before the first half comes to an end. The emotions will run high. The memories will last. New Year's Day. the Penn State Nittany Lions against Pete Carroll's powerful USC Trojans in the granddaddy of them all. ABC brings you the 95th Rose Bowl game presented by City at 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Well, both teams go in at 11 and one Penn State's only loss at Iowa. Southern Cal's only loss at Oregon State. Joe Paterno recently signing a three-year extension through 2011. He may coach forever. Why didn't they give him longer? <laughs> pretty good year. You have a pretty good point. 23 bowl wins for Joe Pa. Meanwhile, here at Freedom Hall in Louisville, the Cardinals are an abysmal two for 17 shooting. And Rick Pitino has been apoplectic. However, Jay, it's only a 12-point game. And only three seconds on the shot clock. You have to watch Darger here. A good play defensively. And Rutledge mishandled it, knocked away from him. A shot clock violation. Maybe the lift that Louisville is looking for here. College basketball on ESPN continues Saturday afternoon with a doubleheader featuring three of the nation's top 25s. At noon east in a Big East showdown. It'll be number three Pitt taking on number eight Georgetown and then at two Eastern, number 18 Tennessee against defending NCAA champion Kansas. Jay and I will be there in Lawrence and that could be a dandy. Samuels with a kick out for Williams. McGee dumping it down low. Clark muscles his way into the two. A really nice job by Louisville to pass out of the post and then get a post on the opposite side of the floor to Earl Clark. That was good basketball by the Cardinals. Louisville's season low for a half, by the way, is 28 points. That was in the game, the loss to Western Kentucky. They only had a dozen points here. But plenty of time left first half. Long ball straight on around and out by Darger. Louisville got lucky there. Darger, a great shooter. They gave him a wide open look. Whenever the, whenever the ball goes inside, they've gotten something good. Now Samuels floating in, but did not have a very strong grip on the basketball. Well, that's where he's got to catch, gather, and go up strong. And he's, he is such a strong player, he really needs to use that strength more often. He drove back into the contest. He's in a marvelous first half for the running rebels. Belfield trying to create. He's also dangerous outside. Dumping it into the paint. Looking for a quick strike. That won't fall for Rutledge. But they got a switch where Samuels is guarding Belfield. He got him off his feet. He should have gone into him to draw that foul. And Randy Green. He'll knock back a three. The 5'10 senior. And what a momentum switch in the span of about 90 seconds. And the crowd certainly senses it inside Freedom Hall. 5.02 left, an 8.0 run for Louisville. So we have a timeout on the court. Louisville coming back in this one as we go back to the studio and Ryan Burr. Ryan? All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Let's check out the Music City Bowl. Vandy at Boston College, 13-7 game here. Dominique Davis going deep. Colin Lamont's got it. And he's going to the end zone. That made it 14-13 BC. Vandy has responded with a field goal. It is 16-14 over on ESPN, guys.
Brian, thank you very much. Well, the Louisville Cardinals quickly making their way back into this one on a mini run. And Jay, what has brought this? Was it the stop out of the timeout on the shot clock violation? It was their defense. Their defense over the last probably six, seven minutes has really been solid in the half court, whether they've been in their 2 3 zone or man. And they've come down, they've scored a couple baskets in transition off that. That's allowed them to set up their press. And now they've got a different walk about them, a different swagger when they walk out on the floor. Well, immediately going back inside to Samuels, you would expect it. He would be the go to guy, the freshman, here for the remainder of this first half. Patino's really been harping on that to get the ball to the big kid and let him work. When it'll be the last four possessions, 0 for 3 with a turnover. And well, when it goes inside to Samuels, UNLV is digging down on him. And if he kicks the ball back out, they can repost on the other side of the floor and go inside their own clock. Rutledge with a 3, and he drains that one. Mauricio Rutledge, the senior out of Sacramento. Dave, if UNLV keeps using ball fakes, whether they're shot fakes or pass fakes, they can get this defense to move and find some openings. Foul here against UNLV with 427 to go before halftime on Wallace. And that'll be his first. Louisville, one of the best in the country in shutting down the opponent's three-point shot. They're holding the opposition to 27% beyond the arc, but London Rebels have burned them with several here in the first half. One area where Louisville really needs to improve is from the free throw line. This is a weak free throw shooting team overall. They shoot just over 60% as a team. Clark corrects the rebound and right back up and in. They're strong there. Earl Clark with the bucket off the miss. Well, you have a weak free throw shooting team that puts a premium on free throw blockouts, and Vegas did not block out. That just allowed Earl Clark to slide in there and get an easy basket. UNLV having their lead sliced down to eight. Willis lets open for just a second. Darger will dump it to the foul line. Rougeau trying to spin, flips it up and knocks down a very tough shot. Well, he did it with a shot fake. That got Samardo Samuels to lift up and leave the floor. Williams, a quick attack on the other end, no basket. Foul comes before that shot with 348 to go before halftime. Timeout here at Freedom Hall, and so far, Law Kruger likes the looks of it. Ryan Byrne, Jimmy Dykes in studio, coming up on the Dick Sporting Goods Halftime Report. North Carolina puts their unbeaten streak on the line at Nevada. Pitt was unbeaten, down five at the half, but they respond at Rutgers. Plus a wild, wild day in the Big Ten. Who would survive? We'll let you know, coming up on the Dick Sporting Goods Halftime Report. David J. All right, Ryan and Jimmy, looking forward to what you guys have to say at halftime. How to explain this, Louisville, five out of 21 in field goal shooting, 29 possessions and a lot of empty possessions, four turnovers to this point. But Louisville just hasn't been sharp, with the exception of about a seven-minute period in the middle of this first half, where they started off so poorly. And a lot of the shots they missed weren't because you know, they were just way off in their shooting, and it's because they took some challenged and bad shots and difficult shots. A bad miss by Terrence Williams, just 55 percent at the foul line, but they're going to retain possession here with 3.47 to go in the opening half. Louisville at 8 and 2, UNLV at 11 and 2. Jack Davis Smith faking the three in that paint. She dumps that off to good, and he lost the handle on it, slapped away from him over to Wallace and UNLV. Can't bring that ball down. Rebound tipped and controlled by Williams. Cardinals trying to get some offensive rhythm here, but a lot of time down has been one shot and miss, and that's been it. Well, Clark did a nice job rebounding, climbing the backs of UNLV to get that offensive board. They have to keep going inside. UNLV is in foul trouble. Keep putting them in a position to rack up more fouls. Double dribble there by Andre McGee. He turns it over. And they're going to bring back on Samardo Samuels here. It looked like he just dropped that ball, and if he had just dropped it and picked it up, he would be able to dribble it again. But perhaps we were across the court from him. Maybe he did dribble it and just fumbled it as well. Oscar Belfield, first team all city in Los Angeles last year, doing a real nice job on the point. Wallace again. This time, he'll knock back a three. Not a good gamble by Terrence Williams. He gambled, was out of the play. 
And wide open in the corner was Kendall Wallace, who had a great game against Southern Utah after Wink Adams went out at 15 points in that game. On that baseline now inside Clark, nice move. Earl Clark, very slippery, the 6'9 junior with the basket. That's why he needs to post up more. He's a very, very skilled player, but down in the post, you know, he can pivot, use that nice little step through move. He can really be a scorer down there. Rougeau finds Wallace again off his fake. Bellfield to penetrate at the foul line. Great look for Rougeau and an easy deuce. And he just kept his head about him when he was in the lane. He didn't panic. He let the traffic clear and made a play. You know, UNLV has had a lot of success when they've made shot fakes and ball fakes. They need to continue that. And again, they have quieted this big crowd in a very festive holiday mood when it got started. That is not the case right now. Shot clock at 15. Samuels with the hook too strong. Smarto Samuels not there for him. UNLV did a nice job of making him catch it a little bit further out. If he catches it deeper, he's going to be able to go up and score. That, that far out, he's less likely to be able to make that move. He's really feeling it, but too strong with that jump shot over Samuels. That his first miss. He has been just sensational. And Smith finds Samuels. He leans in and left it way short. It comes back to Clark. He can't carry it. And a foul and a rebounding fray here will go against UNLV. And Rougeau, who hasn't had a lot to be upset about. Well, that's his second. There are a lot of guys with two fouls. Great move here by Earl Clark. Little up fake and then the step through. And we've, we've talked about Samardo Samuels when he gets the ball inside about being stronger. And that was a good example on that last play. I mean, he had nobody around him. And he just kind of short on him. He didn't go up and play above the rim on that play. And he's fully capable of it. He can rip the rim down when he's playing above it. Jerry Smith at the line. Makes the first. He's only at 57%, as Jay mentioned. Louisville scuffles at the line. 63% as a team. UNLV a couple of finishes and some free throw blockouts away from being up 20 in this game. Yes, Smith looked very good at the strike there. Full court pressure. Got to watch out for the trap coming at you. Belfield right up to center. There it is. Can't pick the ball up there. And Smith reaching in and fouling him from behind. Capital One Bowl Week continues New Year's Day at 11 a.m. Eastern with the Outback Bowl. Steve Spurrier's team taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's all part of Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. The old ball coach. Now Steve Spurrier was a uh, an assistant football coach at Duke when I was a, a player there. And he is something else, that guy. Just a great guy, great golfer, and a lot of fun to be around. Good defensive team. Instead of those explosive Florida teams he used to have, Rutledge making a quick move to his left, spins it up, and that won't roll in. Mitchell, man, that one slotted away from him right out of the sky by good 44 seconds left before halftime. Now Rick Pitino, you can see, telling his team to finish the play by grabbing the ball. I used, to a, I used to get a laugh out of that when the crew, you, you'd be fighting like crazy for the ball. And then the coach would, would yell at you at the end saying, grab the ball. <laughs> I, said, well, I know that. I mean, I was trying to. Why didn't you do it? Mitchell open, drops it, left it well short. Good did a good job hopping out there to defend. On the fast break, here's Williams into the paint, a clean block. Up top McGee. Clark, he's traveling. Yes, indeed. He gives it back. 21 seconds left. It was a late call, but it was a right call. Now, I've never worried about a late call. I, I, the calls that have always bothered me were the ones that were so quick, they're almost anticipatory. I don't mind a late call as long as it's right. And that was a late one, but I think it was absolutely right. Well, UNLV about to wind down. A very impressive first half for them. Anything but for the Louisville Cardinals. Save about a six or seven minute stretch. Belfield down the lane, trying to reverse. And that's how the first half is going to end. It's the lowest half of scoring for Patino's team this season. 21 points. And at the break, the running Rebels on top here, 32 to 21.
Now back to Ryan Byrne, Jimmy Dykes in the studio for the Dick Sporting Goods Halftime Report. All right, Dave. Uh, well, Jimmy Dykes, where do we start? Louisville starts 1 for 16 from the field, 21 points. Their previous low was 28. That came in a loss. This is a team that was three in the country at one point. What's wrong with Louisville? Well, you heard Jay Billis say in the first half that Louisville has just not been sharp, and he's exactly right. However, watching them in practice back in October, I thought they were the most competitive team that I saw all fall. I don't think it's a lack of effort, but they're not sharp, they're not executing. Samardo Samuels right now, to me, I know Rick Pitino is asking him to be an above the rim guy. He's not. He's 6'8 and 245 pounds. He's an angle guy that needs angles to score, and right now, they're just simply playing behind him. He cannot make shots over the top of people right now. Samardo Samuels, new part of the offense. He's a low post guy. They used to run it through the high post with Padgett. Just a a lot of things right now that aren't quite right with Louisville. Uh, we will see in the second half a UNLV a tournament team in the past. Yep. They have Louisville on the robes up 11 at the half. Once again, one for 16 with the Cardinals mm. to start the game. Should be a good second half to say the least. Coming up next, what to watch for a Big East as we get to Notre Dame at DePaul. What are you looking for here, Jimmy? Well, Notre Dame, first of all, maybe the most veteran team in the Big East, so they may, they need to maneuver the Big East waters this year like a veteran team would do. How do you do that? You defend on the road, you get key rebounds, you get loose balls, and you play the game like a veteran team should play. Anxious to see if they'll do it. Yeah, they may have 21 points in the first five minutes, much like North Carolina, another team that can really score, get up and down, the number one team in the land. Score 95 points a game, and think about this, Oregon State, California, and Colorado State all hung over 70 on Nevada. I'm not sure they can keep the Tar Heels below 90 in this game. Uh, we will see as we ring in the new year with the number one team in the land. When we return, it's been a busy day of college basketball. We go around the country. It includes one of the undefeated teams in the nation. Pitt down five at the half. Could the Panthers stay unbeaten? Minnesota was unbeaten, taking on Michigan State. All that and more when we return. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. surprised are you with what we've seen? I'm very surprised. They're playing without Wink Adams for UNLV, not only to be ahead in this game, but substantially ahead. And the play of Rene Rougeau has been a big factor in this game. You know, came to UNLV as a walk-on and has turned himself into just one outstanding player in the first half. 12 points, four rebounds, four assists, and a block shot. He's been very good defensively on the offensive end. He's gotten out on the break. He has used fakes very well. He's gotten into the middle where he's been a playmaker in there. He's just had a spectacular game and has really served as a leader. And for this Louisville team, I mean, they shot 23% in the first half. Samardo so Samuels went 0 for 4 from the field. Terrence Williams 0 for 6 from the field. A lot of challenge shots taken by Louisville, and they've allowed a lot of open shots by UNLV. That is not a good formula to win at all. And the Ronald Rebels have hit their three-pointers. They have made five out of eight now keep in mind foul trouble could really be a factor for UNLV here in the second 20 minutes there four men with two fouls including three of the starters with two fouls but now they shoot Darby with fires on the three chasing it into the corner and he saves it but back over to Louisville interesting starting lineup in the second half for Rick Patino starting there for Sosa who's really been struggling and Sosa with the miss as he comes into the starting lineup for the second half. It's, just, it's especially curious to see the lineup because I thought Andre McGee really did a nice job when he came into the game defensively putting pressure on the ball, changing the tenor of the game defensively for Louisville. And it really gave Louisville a motor from time to time on the offensive end as well. Darger loses his rhythm. Shot clock down to 10. The pull up pop, and that's going to be too strong. So the first two jump shots off the mark here for UNLV to begin the second half up by 11 against the number 18 team in the country Smith swinging it up top here's Williams and he's still pulled 
Samuels fighting for the rebound will get fouled here. A look at our first half statistics and pretty ugly if you're a fan of the Louisville Cardinals. Not a whole lot to scream and shout about. Really the only good news for Louisville in the first half one they weren't down further because they could have been. Uh, they got a few offensive rebounds and some offensive boards off of missed free throws if UNLV had boxed out a little better on some of those missed free throws Louisville could have been down even further but if Louisville can get back into this game with relative ease if they keep going inside and forcing UNLV in a position to foul them and put them at the free throw line. Darius Santee has to go to the bench here for the running Rebels with his third foul. Samuels made the first, makes the second. They press again. Within nine. And Belfield has to know the trap is coming. He's got to be prepared for it, and his teammates have to give him a receiver. He has been pretty calm. Rujo looking to move into that paint, and he is fouled on the play. Well, that's a good call. You got to take that arm bar off of the player once he starts to make his move. And Terrence Williams just trying to control him with that arm bar. And Rougeau showing a lot of patience in the post. When he caught the ball, he didn't make a quick move. He let the defense clear. Belfield will set it up. Oscar Belfield out of Los Angeles. There's the high screen. Louisville switching it. See how effective Rougeau has been. The offensive star down the lane. Belfield draws the foul from behind by Clark. Who got airborne and committed the foul. Oh, what a great move. Off the switch, Belfield had a little bit of a mismatch. Able to get around it, but look the poise here. Stopping and using that little shot fake to get Earl Clark into the air and then going right into him to draw that foul. That's a mature play by a freshman player. Have you seen many rookie point guards in his class this season? I'm, he, I, off the top of my head, trying to think of no, but he has done a really good job. I think he's going to be a really, really good player. You know, it's tough to, to put the ball into the hands of a freshman and have him run your team, but he has done a really, really good job. And he played at a terrific high school program, Westchester High School in the Los Angeles area. Makes a lot of good decisions with the ball. He doesn't turn it over much, a low error rate. And very calm with the ball as well, which is unusual for a freshman. He played very well against Nevada at 17 in that game, at double figures against Cal. Williams drives strong, lays it up and in with that left hand, and it dropped in for him. And finally, a field goal for Terrence Williams. And it feels like the Cardinals are on the attack now. Down 11 and a half, they have pulled it in eight. You can tell, Jay, this big crowd is just dying to get involved and to lift this team in the second half. Willis with Smith on his hip, and Smith fouled him before the shot. He's just got his hands on him. And that's going to get called every time. And Smith had to look like he had that left hand on the hip of the driver and anytime you do that so watch this drive here the switch he got he's got his hands on and even though he might not be pushing him with that hand when you've got your hands on a guy it's an easy call will a switch in very difficult shot didn't get the roll smith pushing that pass up ahead to sosa and he's traveling with it i don't know where edgar sosa was going and that's a problem that he gets into from time to time is he can become a reckless driver in a way and get himself into some bad positions but boy he's got a lot of talent. A hard nosed player from the Dominican in the past he's been in Rick Pitino's doghouse he's been in and out of it. Trying to stay out of it here in the second half against UNLV. Osama setting the screen. Got a switch and a little bit of a mismatch with Samuels guarding Willis. Willis lets fly the three and he buries it. I'm not sure that Louisville is going to be able to continue to switch some of these ball screens when you've got that kind of a difference when they're essentially little on big screens and you've got a big guy that's switching out onto a perimeter play. A feisty effort by the running Rebels. They have made six out of ten from three. Clark quick move to his left. With lightning quick. Williams will follow it up with the lay-in. More pressure now for Louisville. They have not forced many turnovers 
from this UNLV team, which only kicks it over 12 times per game, mainly because of Belfield. But this one is scrapped on the deck as he lost it. The tie up and the possession arrow will take it in the opposite direction. Louisville may not be forcing turnovers at all, but they're certainly forcing UNLV to do some things that they don't want to do. They're speeding them up. They just sped up Belfield on that last play and put him into a position to turn the ball over. Now that's going to wear on you after a while. They're kind of like body punches in a prize fight. You know, they show up later on in the fight. And a lot of this pressure will really pay some dividends down the line toward the end of the game for Louisville. Williams outside that three-point arc. Here's McGee. Back to Williams for the three. All back in. Quick dish right there to mid-court. Rujo trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Lowe. Swoops it in. He has had himself quite a night. When Terrence Williams again gambles and gets burned as a result of it. Gave up an easy basket. But Rougeau is an impressive player. He's smart, plays with pace, understands the game. Caught too strong off the backboard. Rebound tip. McGee does a nice job to keep that in play for Louisville. And the Samba is fouling Samardo Samuels. He's just fouling him. And they do get him for that one. Pushing from behind the whistle on Masamba. Now turning into a pretty good battle here. Louisville looking for that comeback switch at home at Freedom Hall. UNLV with an 11-point lead on the road at Freedom Hall against Louisville. And anytime you play in the post, you got to get ready to get grabbed. And right now, Masamba grabbing Samuels, just pulling that shirt. That's what I was talking about when I said that Masamba was fouling Samuels. Ultimately, it was called. But we're going to have to go back to the old Bear Bryant days where he had those tearaway jerseys, you know. <laughs> Johnny Muso with the running with half a jersey down the field. <laughs> Lucky to have anything left at the end of that. He got about four or five fouls in, it appeared. 15-28 to go. And UNLV continues to have a double-digit lead. Asaba will remain on the floor, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Samuels, the freshman. You know, that's one of those, Dave, where you get your jersey pulled out, and the referee might call it, but then he tells you, hey, tuck in that shirt. Yeah, right. He said, the guy was pulling on it. You're in violation. <laughs> Williams with a catch, and that one blocked by guess who? Rujo has just been absolutely everywhere. His second block shot of the game. And look where he came from. I mean, he had to come from the top of the key to block that shot. He's got a sense of urgency about his play. Knows with a nice, easy stroke for the two-pointer. You know, Rujo is one of those players where, you know, it's not like, hey, you know, I don't, I'm not worried about somebody scoring on my, my guy scoring. I'm worried about our team getting scored on. So if you're going to score on Joe Dogger's man, or if Joe Dogger's man's going to score, you know, Rougeau takes that personally. He's going to go down and try to stop that. He, he is a terrific basketball player. Foul on Andre McGee, but back to the block. I mean, look at the ground he has to cover. He's up above the free throw line and comes down, blocks that shot from behind. That's a sense of urgency to make a play. The far away, not there for Belfield. That's a bad shot. Move there to jump over a man. Rolls again, this time from three point distance. But Williams made that play happen. And those are the kind of plays that get you wins. Dagger looking into that pressure. Lost his dribble, got it across. A six point lead. That's all for UNLV. It's the closest the game has been since it was six to nothing. well away from the basket against Louisville on Samuels. Well, they are getting hurt off those sw switches off a high screen, but Terrence Williams, Rougeau dives after this, and Williams just hurdles him. Looked like Edwin Moses. And Knowles, very clean from the corner. Going to be an offensive foul. Offensive foul against UNLV on the inbounds. Well, the key, the key term right now, or the key concept for UNLV has got to be poised. This crowd is back into it. Louisville is back into it. If they knock a three down here, we've got a one-possession game. They've got to show some poise here. 
Willis with his third foul. Santee Masama also had three for UNLV. Samuels backing in, lost the dribble, a scramble. Possession arrow will carry it the other way here, and it'll be UNLV basketball. College Hoops on ESPN continues Saturday afternoon, a doubleheader featuring three of the top 25, a noon Eastern, the Big East Showdown, number three, Pitt, against number eight, Georgetown. And at 2 o'clock, Tyler Smith and number 18, Tennessee, face the defending NCAA champion, Kansas Jayhawks, inside storied Allen Fieldhouse. Boy, whenever Pitt and Georgetown get together, and it is an absolute back alley fist fight. And Greg Monroe has proven to be a truly outstanding freshman with a great deal of poise, but that's going to be tested against DeJuan Blair and Pittsburgh, Sam Young. And that's a terrific Pittsburgh team. Six-point game. Belfield. Wraparound pass. Beautifully done to Masamba for two. Well, Belfield is really taking advantage of those switches out top. Got the high screen for Masamba. Samuel switched off. And when McGee tried to catch up to him, he took advantage of it by dumping it off. Remember now, the running Rebels playing without their top player, Wink Adams. He is out because of an abdominal strain, hasn't practiced in about a week or so. Foul at 13.09 to go. Masaba picking up his fourth foul. We should have twice that many fouls. They just haven't called them. I mean, he is getting a fistful of Samuel's jersey just about every time down. And I mean, he looked like an offensive lineman blocking for the quarterback rather than trying to block out. He didn't turn around. He just went right into Samuels. Here's McGee, too strong. Samuels collects the rebound. Knowles won't wait. In and out. Rebounded away by Santee. He's also playing in some foul trouble. One of the Rebels are starting to get to that critical stage where they may not be able to play the really tight defense that they played in the first half because of fouls. You just have to be smart. And there, there are going to be some plays that you have to use your judgment that you just aren't going to be able to make. It's easier to get back a bucket. You can't get back a foul. Wallace looking inside. Rujo, that empty pass denied. We're going to run. Here's Williams. Stang, and now a block from behind. Great stop. Look like Rujo is there again. 12-25 to play here. And UNLV hopping mad. They thought they had the basketball. Rene Rougeau never gives up on a play. He times this out, and he's just got an amazing feel on the defensive end and a sense of urgency. What a terrific play by Rene Rougeau. If this young man doesn't get Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year, I want to meet the guy that gets it because he's one heck of a defender. UNLV playing with great intensity. They're very upset on that tip out of bounds. They thought for sure it was off Louisville. But they are all over the floor and leading by eight on the road at Freedom Hall. Well, Earl Clark's a the guy they need to go to now. Put him down into the post and give him the ball. He's got a mismatch with a smaller man on him. Knowles on the high dribble, slicing through, blocked out of play by Santee. Very active hands by UNLV. Well, they're so good defensively. I mean, they make it really difficult for you to score in the paint. They encourage you to take perimeter jump shots. They're not a great rebounding team, but they do a pretty good job rebounding. Uh, Louisville has gotten some opportunities on the offensive glass. Shot clock at nine. Give it to Clark. Let him go to work. Knowles at the foul line. Hoist it. Rebounded away by the Rebels. You know, that's just a challenge shot, Dave. That, that, that shot was absolutely unnecessary for Louisville. You're taking a shot that's probably a 20% shot for Preston Knowles. So just as quickly as they got into a rhythm, they're out of it. That's going to be an offensive foul, however, on the freshman Belfield. We have a timeout with 11.36 to go. The running Rebels, sky and high, blocking just about everything in sight at Freedom Hall. Ryan Bo with your Sports Center right now. Chad Pennington has made a comeback of making a comeback. Dolphins quarterback won the 08 Comeback Player of the Year. Second time in three years, Pennington has received the honor. He also won it in 06 with the Jets.
John Daly said Wednesday he's been suspended for six months by the PGA Tour for conduct that brought unwelcome publicity to the tour. Daly has not played since October. It's next Sports Center, 11 o'clock on ESPN News. David J. Right, thank you. The running Rebels with a lead over the Cardinals here. 40 to 32 over Louisville. Of course, Louisville last season won 14 games inside the Big East. And looking ahead to the upcoming games in the Big East, Georgetown certainly with a full plate, having already knocked off Connecticut. Boy, there are a lot of numbers by the names of these teams in the Big East. They've got eight teams in the top 25. And you know that Jimmy Dyke said something really uh, intelligent early. Not that he doesn't always, but uh, said something really smart earlier today, talking about different teams. Don't let one loss turn into two losses. You know, having a hangover for one loss and let it and let it turn into a couple of losses. And that may be most true in the Big East. You know, because you're going to play well and lose games in that league. And that's not true of every league. You know, usually in, in, in a good league, you, it, when you, you're a good team, if you play really well, you're going to win. You know, you can play really well in the Big East and still lose a game. And you can't carry that from game to game. you got to flush it, win or lose, and move on. And Louisville, an elite eight team in the NCAA tournament last season. They took four starters back from that club, but they are in trouble here against the running Rebels on their home floor in Louisville, Kentucky. Samuels well out away from the basket. Shot clock down to 14. Williams on the dribble. They used to get the ball in the middle to David Patrick. He would make a play. It's a lot different getting it right now to Samuels. He needs to learn how to play up there, and he will. But he's not a facilitator up top yet. And a third foul by Rougeau on a little push there. 11 08 to go. One thing that UNLV really has to do on the defensive end, they've got a rebound. You know, Louisville has been having their way essentially on the glass, and that's kept them in it. UNLV's good defensively, but they've got to grab a rebound to finish the defensive possession. Black on the high post, trying to dump it back. It comes out to him. Sosa glancing up at the shot clock. Now begins to drive. 13 seconds to shoot it. Smith off the fake. Clark wants to take it closer. And zips the pass. Williams backs it into the backcourt. And so that'll be a violation. Turned over. Rick Pitino at times in the first half was absolutely beside himself. His team got off to a one for 16 shooting start. You know, Dave, there are times when you watch Louisville play and you say, how did they ever lose? They play so well. And then there are other times you watch them play and you go, how did they ever win? You know, they, they have a Jekyll and Hyde component to them right now that I think they're going to shed as the year goes on. Fired up that one won't fall out of the corner. On the drive, Smith. His pass tipped to Sosa. In nowhere that to lane. go. Yeah, nowhere to go, and he turned it over. So it stays an eight-point lead for the running Rebels. That scoreboard has been stuck right there. UNLV against the number 18 team in the country from Freedom Hall. Jay Billis, Dave O'Brien alongside. Happy New Year to you. It's going to be one ugly first practice of the new year for Rick Pitino and the Cardinals if this keeps up. Not a lot of pressure right now exerted by Louisville on the defensive end. They're just allowing UNLV to run their stuff. I mean, you look at the lineup that Rick Pitino has on the floor. I mean, Edgar Sosa is not going to be able to complain that he hasn't gotten an opportunity in this game. Pitino has stayed with him throughout this game, started him in the second half. He's turned it over four times. Santee to the line. Jimmy College transfer out of Midland College in Texas. Where he was on the 2007 National Junior College Champions. So Sosa, who's having trouble keeping the ball in his possession, will hit the bench. Santee, a real blue power player. Likes to go over that left shoulder and does a pretty good job on the glass and is a strong defender. He's got a he played good defense without fouls. Can't afford to lose him in this game. He did make one of the foul shots. The first points either team has scored in almost four minutes. Samuels on the high post. Santee out to guard him chest to chest. McGee, and that pass may have been intended for Williams. 
So Louisville just looks sloppy. Even Patino shaking his head over there on his side. McGee dumps it off to Samuels. He turns and backs it in. A very difficult shot. Well, it was a difficult shot and one of the first ones he's completed, but you know, it's not like he was being guarded by Elijah on there. He had Kendall Wallace on him. He should have put Wallace into the fifth row. That's been a recurring trend here. Louisville not taking advantage in close in particular. Willis again to Santee. He bonded back. They'll get another effort. Crowd doesn't like that at all. Rutledge will miss everything from the corner. Well, that was a great opportunity for UNLV. The best time, in my judgment, to pull the trigger on the three is after an offensive rebound. They got a wide open look. McGee did too. How about Williams going up high? I'll find everybody for the rebound. Well, he's got an extra step on that ladder. You wonder why he doesn't dunk for it. Foul as Clark gets hit on his way up in the act of shooting. He'll go to the line. Well, that's a good point you make about Williams, that he is such a great athlete. He doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. He makes really strong moves, but at the end of those moves, oftentimes he tries to make a finesse finish. But that's a big-time grab of that ball up there. He was really high up there. Earl Clark going to the line. And he's a triple double capable four. But he tends to settle for jump shots a little bit too much for my personal taste. And I'm sure Rick Patino might tell him something similar, but he's an awfully good player. Well, Louisville inching closer now. They're within five. Willis, the man filling in for Wink Adams, who hasn't played a minute in this one. And the foul against the Cardinals. They are literally hopping mad that the whistle blew there. Boy, it looked like Willis had lost the ball before there was any contact. Watch him make this little shake move, and I don't know. That's a tough one, because it looked like Earl Clark got all ball. But anytime you reach across the body out of, a, out of an offensive player, it's going to give the officials a chance to, to blow that whistle. Well, Freedom Hall faithful not in a party going mood right now. After that foul, Willis at the line. He's at 73%. He buries the first one. One more look at that foul. Looks pretty clean from that angle. It's close. Awfully close. Sometimes things look like a, a foul and the referees call it. And, you know, it's been a part of the game for him. He makes the pair. Belfield will come back on to run the point now for the running Rebels. He's been very, very solid running their offense for Lon Kruger in his fifth year at UNLV. They have not lost the true road game. Clark off to good here. Coming up on eight minutes to play at Freedom Hall. Knowles bouncing. Here's Clark bouncing inside for two. I think Louisville needs to do more of that. Now, Earl Clark needs to be a go-to scorer for this team, and he can be that down into the post, especially with some of the mismatches he's had. This crowd just itching to see the Cardinals go on a long run so they can explode. Willis, hard drive. Denied by Williams. That was a clean block. And they have the possession arrow. Back over to Louisville it goes. Rick Pitino has fired up as anybody in the house. 43-38. Louisville on the move here at home. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Certainly tightening up here as the running Rebels have the lead of 43 to 38 with seven and a half minutes to go. As UNLV looks for what would be an upset at Freedom Hall in front of 19,314, a sellout. And Jay, you sense a huge possession here for the Cardinals? I think this is a really big possession. I think if Louisville scores here, they're going to be in a great position to win. If UNLV can get a stop and keep them at bay, keep this crowd at bay, if this gets down to a one-possession game, I think UNLV is going to be in some trouble.
Williams with the miss. Another scramble on the deck, and the Rebels do come away with it. Well, you can feel after they weren't able to score, the building gets deflated a little bit. It's quiet again. You know, the building was ready to explode. It's been right there on the verge several times. Belfield has had a calming influence despite his freshman status. Hands off to Rujo. It was the star in the first half for UNLV. They're up 11 at the break. Rujo at the foul line. Working on Samuels. He'll spin here. Wallace will hoist it up the shot clock going down to one. And it's going to be kicked out off of Louisville. Bad break for the Cardinals. Good luck for the running Rebels. You know, the shot was so short that it went straight down essentially when it hit the front part of the rim. It had been almost a normal bounce. I think Louisville would have been in great position to get it. Louisville's dominated the glass in this game. Got a lot of second shot opportunities in the offensive end. They've limited UNLV to one shot in the second half. Well, he shoved on his way underneath the basket with 621 remaining. And Trayvon Willis, who is a work in progress, says Lon Kruger, got into the starting lineup because 6'1 senior Wink Adams did not play today, or certainly hasn't yet, with that strained abdominal muscle, which he suffered on December 23rd. One and one time, as Wink can do nothing but watch. Rolls to shoot. 73% of the strike and rattles the first one home. Willis had a great game in the win over Arizona, where UNLV just cut up Arizona's 2 2 1 class. And he had 19 points against the Wildcats, six rebounds, four assists, didn't turn it over too much, and he has been turnover prone. He turns it over about three times a game. Mauricio Rutledge back on now for Kruger. Wallace will take to the bench. UNLV lost just two players from last year's NCAA tournament team, which fell to eventual national champion Kansas in the second round in March. Here's Mose in the corner. Clark and Dugger really banging bodies underneath. They're doing it again. Clark with his shot. That won't fall. Samuels, it came right to him and he laid it in. The offensive glass is killing UNLV right now. And Dugger didn't pick up a foul there because he defended with his body rather than with his hands, even though he was knocking Clark around pretty good. The lead at five for UNLV. They have the ball here. And on a turnover, Willis gives it back. No, I don't, I don't agree with that call. I thought Willis just dropped the ball. My understanding is you drop the ball, you can pick it up and go. That wasn't an intended dribble. That's what he wants to know. But they called it that same way earlier in the ballgame. Williams off to the game. Fire it up. Yes, a three-pointer on target. A 16-5 run for the Cardinals. A whistle here with 522 left and a foul against Louisville. Patino again angry. He's not alone. UNLV got this down to a one possession game. Andre McGee has really done a nice job in this game. You know, he makes big plays for this team. Only 5'10", but he has a huge heart. He's a terrific defender. I think the game changes in its complexion when he comes into the game because of the pressure he can put on the ball. Bowles fouling Willis in the backcourt. He knocks down the first one. UNLV not a great free throw shooting team either, but Trayvon Willis, one of the better free throw shooters on this team. He's one up over his average of 10 points a game. He made the pair. The lead at four. Williams trying to create. He has Lawrence in the corner. Got it! Three-pointer! Louisville within one. Timeout. Timeout, UNLV. 5-0-1 left. 
And don't you get the feeling, Jay, that's just too much time for the Roman Rebels. They seem a little worn down, and Terrence Williams has been a playmaker with the ball, turning the corner and finding an open shooter. Hi, I'm Angus Sosa, and my New Year's resolution is to have the most fun I ever had playing this game of basketball. I'm Andre McGee, and my New Year's resolution is to try to win every game in 2009. Hi, my name is Will Scott, and my 2009 New Year's resolution is to try to be nicer to any boy my sister brings home over the holidays. <laughs> what, a, what a nice big brother, Will Scott. You notice he limited that to just over the holidays. <laughs> After the holidays are over, it's open season All on boys that off. the sister brings home. Exactly right. Well, UNLV has gone cold here in the second half. They've only connected on three field goals, and Louisville has all the momentum. The running Rebels lead has been cut down to one with over five minutes to play. Well, right now, the number one priority for UNLV has to be to get the ball in bounds and be strong with it because Louisville is coming after them with their full court pressure, and they have really changed the complexion of this game with their pressure. Could be that guy. Hard drive against Clark around that baseline. Swoops it again. Block from behind. Samuels with the deflection. Williams to attack the bump. And he'll go to the line. He'll be shooting two. Samuels ignited it, Jay, on the other end. Well, Louisville's now playing terrific defense. They're challenging shots. And they're finishing up possessions by going after the ball. And when Terrence Williams gets it, he's a playmaker with the ball in his hands. Leads this team in assists. A great field. He just isn't a really good shooter. Rick Pitino has been working with him on his free throw form. Got out a video camera and he's trying to get him to tuck that elbow in. But his elbow is going to slide to the side. Instead of keeping that elbow under the ball. Rick said he felt like a golf coach, you know, with that video camera. David Ledbetter. That's the first lead for the Louisville Cardinals all night. 48-47. More pressure. Rujo, he's fouled from behind and with 424 left. Reach in foul by Smith. Capital One Bowl Week continues New Year's Day at 11 a.m. Eastern on ESPN with the Outback Bowl. Steve Spurrier and the South Carolina Gamecocks will take on Dolph Walker candidate Sean Green in the Iowa Hawkeyes. Green rushing for over 1,700 yards and 17 touchdowns during the season. Spurrier had one of the great lines of the year this year when he said his team was going to run the ball, and when their opposition really stuck the run during the game, he said, I said we were going to run the ball. I didn't say we were going to run real far with it. <laughs> Rujo trying to tie it up here for the running Rebels, and he does it at 48. Inside, I think, is where Louisville needs to go, whether the Samuels or Will Clark. Foul, quick whistle here with 4.15 left against UNLV. Louisville's pressure has worn down UNLV. And this is the time of the game where that relentless pressure throughout the game really starts to show up. And even though Louisville didn't play well in the first half and didn't always pressure, in the second half it started to wear this team down. Jerry Smith with the first and a couple of the Louisville Cardinals who really have a hard time at the line. Williams and Smith are making their foul shots here. We talked about it at the very top of the broadcast. It's a real issue for Louisville moving forward in the Big East play. They're just not very good at the line. And they weren't very good at the line last year either. You know, this is not a problem that just cropped up all of a sudden. It's been something they've been dealing with for the last couple of years. Brock Smith very calm at the line. Makes the pair. Louisville by two. Really getting deafening inside Freedom Hall. 
As the Cardinals have finally gotten that lead. Long shot. That's going to fall in by Willis from three-point distance and way downtown. Samardo so Samuels just laid way off of Willis and gave him that shot. Smith with the miss. And a quick three. Well, sometimes big guys, especially freshmen, feel really uncomfortable guarding that far out on the floor. And Samuels needed to be out on Willis to challenge that shot. That was a wide open shot. Belfield outside the three. He's got a mismatch. He needs to blow right by Samuels. Instead, he got blocked by Samuels. Rebound kept alive. The deflection kept alive there by Rougeau. And now uh, Kruger wants a timeout, and he'll get one. Only had five seconds left on the shot clock. Kruger realized it and decided he would call a timeout just so he could get a good shot off. And I think right now he's telling his freshman point guard, blow by that guy. Don't settle for a jumper over 6'9 guy. Get past him. UNLV by one. Louisville's so good here at home. Their last home loss was January 1st, 2008 against Cincinnati. Sosa's jump with two seconds left, partially blocked. Terrence Williams tip in, no good. And former Louisville assistant Mick Cronin beating his mentor as Cincinnati wins it 58 to 57. One of the losses, one of the two losses for UNLV was to Cincinnati. But for Louisville, 15 consecutive home wins here. For the most part tonight, they have been behind and trying to battle from behind. They were down by 11 at halftime. Well, they have really battled defensively. Louisville has dominated the glass. Shot clock down the one, and it's going to expire. Now it's Kruger's turn to bite his lip, his team, with only one field goal in about the last seven minutes. Ryan Burns studio with this Sports Center update. Chick fil A Bowl, LSU and Georgia Tech. Charles Scott from two yards out, and LSU takes the quick seven zip lead over Georgia Tech. Coming up next, right here on ESPN2, it is Notre Dame. Luke Herringote, the Big East leading scorer at DePaul. It's at the top of the hour. Back to Jay and, Dave and Jay at Freedom Hall. All right, thanks very much. And Coming up a little bit later, 10 o'clock Eastern time tonight, we've got North Carolina and Nevada. North Carolina, one of the six remaining unbeaten Jay. Well, one thing you can guarantee is five teams on that list are going to have losses. The one thing I'm, I'm not sure of, and I, you don't say this very often, but I'm not sure anybody's going to beat North Carolina. I mean, I, I still think it's a, a long shot for them to go undefeated, but they're the only team that has a chance. And, and last year, the only team that had a chance was Memphis. And they got knocked off at home by Tennessee in a non-conference game. Other than that, nobody beat them until they got to the NCAA final. And I think North Carolina's got a legit shot to run the table. Williams, a long three. Wow. It was an open shot. Wow. Now, he's not a good three-point shooter. He's, up, he's been on a little bit of a hot streak over the last week or so. But... UNLV with the one-point lead. 242 remaining here at Freedom Hall. Rebels still eyeing an upset against the number 18 team in the poll. The dish underneath. Rougeau's been very, very quiet. He only had one shot that he made here in the second half until that moment. Well, he got it off the Willis penetration. He just blew right by Samardo Samuels. You know, gave him a little head and shoulder fake, and he was gone. And that's exactly what Belfield should have done on the last possession when he settled for that jump shot. I mean, Samardo Samuels cannot guard a guard out on the perimeter. It's just not going to happen. And when he gets blown by, that puts the defense in a help and recover situation. He goes, somebody has to come over. It's Williams, and Clark did not rotate fast enough in order to stop Rougeau underneath. You know, so, once you get beaten off the dribble, Dave, that puts everybody else in help mode. And when they're in help mode, then everybody has to rotate. And you get one little breakdown, it's a layup. Our reset, UNLV with a possession arrow in their favor. 2.25 left. And as mentioned, coming up next, Luke Arangote and number 10 Notre Dame taking on DePaul. Arangote at 23 points and 12 rebounds per game. Quite a menu of college basketball in our New Year's Eve marathon today and tonight. Here's McGee handling the ball. 
for Louisville. Williams settled for that bad three moments ago. McGee will take one of his own, and it's going to go down for him. Now, that was a great shot because McGee was stepping into it. And it was a shot that came off side-to-side -side action. And it ties the game at 53, under two minutes. Belfield, bad pass. Here's Williams with the scoop, and he's fouled. Hit by Joe Darger. He'll go to the line with a minute 44 to play. And Williams went in hard into that table underneath the basket support. He is all right. One of the few times, Dave, that we've seen Belfield make a play that wasn't a smart one. And just really good side-to-side -side action. But he just threw the ball up for grabs here. You, know, you don't often see that. And Williams did a good job of trying to get to the rim. But that's almost one where he's so athletic. I think that's where he might want to square up to the basket, go in and go off two feet, where he can absorb a blow and complete the play. Samuels will hit the bench, at least for now, 144 on the clock. Well, Patino has a better group of perimeter defenders in the game right now, so they can guard the ball, and he should be able to a little bit better. Belfield with Knowles right with him, brings it up on the offensive zone and calls a timeout. Timeout with 1.38 to play. Louisville leading at 55-53. Terrence Williams has been a real spark. Eight rebounds, five assists, and nine points. Really didn't do anything in the first half. Only had one point, but did have five rebounds and two steals at the halftime break. But in the second half, he's really come out a lot stronger. Really used his playmaking ability, his passing skills. He's been a lot smarter with his shot selection. He's made some big-time athletic plays. That block was just a big time defensive play and a good point about the other plays not necessarily the scoring of the shooting it's been the other stuff he's done that has led Louisville back here just two for 14 from the field and he's take he's settled for some jump shots which he has a tendency to do it's not that he can't make jumpers he can but he's not a jump shooter if that makes sense he needs to just that needs to be a part of his game not the main function of it. UNLV trying to answer now they're trailing Willis. Here's Belfield. Louisville making it tough for UNLV just to make a catch. Belfield leans in. Rebound tipped. And which way is it going? They've got a lot of puzzled looks on the mm. faces of the referees. They haven't made up their minds yet. Well, they, have, they need to make a call. I mean, they're asking for, they, they're going to jump it up. I mean, nobody saw it. There are three of them out there. All three officials, Ramos, Chrisman, and Spaulding, looking at each other. They weren't sure who tipped it out. They're going to have to jump it up. If nobody made a call, nobody knows. I mean, we've already had one referee signal a jump ball because he doesn't think anybody knows who it went out off of. Rick Pitino very quickly jumped up to half court, screaming it's got to be a jump. And the arrow in favor of UNLV right now, so UNLV would retain possession but lose the arrow. 120 left. UNLV with the possession. Our crowd doesn't like it. Well, the ball went off of, of Williams. He's the one that knocked it out. But, you know, it's easy to see off a replay. It's just odd to have the officials looking at each other with nobody having a clue what happened. So, Belfield trying to check it in. Willis, little bump there, and he is fouled on the play. He's hit by Andre McGee with a minute 17 left. His third. Coming up next, we've got Notre Dame and DePaul. Fighting Irish at number 10. And against the Blue Demons. So two shots coming here for Willis. Tell you what, DePaul, DePaul better bring their defense to that game because Notre Dame can score. Number one for Trayvon Willis. Now this is Dave why you shoot free throws in practice when you're tired and distracted because there's no question that these players are tired and it is a distraction to shoot here. 
Makes the second one. A one point lead for the Cardinals. They have the ball. Lowe's sending it up now for Rick Patino. Coming up on one minute to play. Inside for the ball. Here's McGee. Patino wants a timeout with 56.8 left. So a timeout. Louisville if you had said Dave before this game to Lon Kruger I'll give you under a minute with it being a one possession game here in Freedom Hall without Wink Adams you think he would have taken that absolutely I think he would have and that's what he's got here but he's got a worn down team and that's the that's the difficult part here's how Adams hurt himself it was December 23rd against Southern Utah he strained his lower abdominal muscle on that play he only played 10 minutes and took just one shot in the game one of the best guards in the country is a scoring guard that has the ultimate green light. And with him in the lineup, UNLV has run a lot of drive and kick stuff. They run a shuffle series and some really nice offense, but much more difficult to score when he's not in the lineup. Louisville has led for a minute and 44 seconds in this entire game. Shot clock down to five. McGee. Knocked away from him. Rutledge got a hand on it. They steal it away. Boy, nothing out of the timeout. And Rick Pitino called the timeout to get everything organized. They got absolutely nothing out of it. Great defense by UNLV. This high screen will give the opportunity to Belfield to turn the corner and maybe even a switch. And here it is. So he's got the matchup he wants. Now he needs to take it. Ron Sanders trying to blow by him. Top shot! He banks it in! What a play by the youngster. Timeout Louisville as UNLV has taken the lead back. Wait, Jay, you, you talked about that matchup. They got the one they wanted, and the kid hit it. What a chess match between these two coaches. Lon Kruger knew that they were going to continue to switch. And when he got that switch, you knew that Belfield wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. Remember, last time he had that matchup, he pulled up for a jumper and allowed Samardo Samuels to block it. This time he blew right past him, took the contact, and completed the play. Oscar Belfield, the freshman point guard out of L.A., does not make the same mistake twice. Now, Louisville has the possession arrow, but Rick Pitino is out of timeouts. Lon Kruger has one remaining on his side. 56 to 55 UNLV looking to spring the upset at number 18 Louisville, which has won 15 consecutive games here at Freedom Hall. Dave, this is where Louisville misses having a true take charge point guard. You know, they don't, Jerry Smith has been running a little bit of point. They've got playmakers in Earl Clark and Terrence Williams, but they don't have a point guard. They can put the ball in his hands and he can get somebody a shot. And that's the difficulty of having 14 seconds, needing a shot to win the game. You know, in whose hands does Rick Pitino put the ball? I mean, he's going to have to manufacture a shot for this team without having a true point guard. So 14.2 left. Louisville with the ball, down one at home. And the running Rebels who have played a marvelous basketball game. So close to the upset. Here's McGee off the inbounds. Williams, eight seconds left. Williams on top, using a screen. Williams on the drive. Left it short. Two seconds left. And this one is going to end in a UNLV upset win. They have defeated Louisville at Freedom Hall by a final score of 56 to 55. Rick Patino in the opening minutes was shocked by his team's performance. And he is still shocked. Not Patino looking for a foul on that play when Terrence Williams got the ball up near the backboard. Williams turning the corner. And if there was any contact, it was incidental. He had an opportunity to finish that play. He just didn't really go up that strong with it. Needed to go up stronger and finish that. Did that look like there was a foul to you? It did not to me. No. I mean, there was a little bit of contact, but it was incidental. And those are the kind, you have to expect that kind of contact, especially at the end of a game. What a performance by UNLV to come out with this win.
They are now 12 and 2, perfect on the road, and they have ended Louisville's winning streak at 15 in a row at home. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now to John Shumby and Fran Fraschilla.